Know ye not? Do you not know? This is Paul's explanation. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? You know, when they had that temple there in Jerusalem, man, Solomon was the first one to do. You know what Solomon did to that temple? He surrounded that temple with all the gods of his pagan wives. Remember when Paul said, be not unequally yoked together? What fellowship hath the temple of God with the temple of idols? There was a man, Manasseh, man, they brought idols into the temple of God. How do, how do we, let me ask you something. Because what we're talking about is if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. You know what the temple of God is for? It's a dwelling place of the Spirit of God. How would you defile that? Be a couple ways to defile it, wouldn't it? I believe a new King James Bible is a defilement of God's temple. So is an NIV and a new American standard. Because if you think those things are the spirit of God, then the spirit of God just as confused as the rest of us are. That means when you take in them new Bibles, you're getting another spirit. You think the wisdom of this world defiles the temple of God? Who runs the course of this world? The spirit, that the prince of who, what? Do those, you think those things defile the temple of God? Well, what's, what's God going to do? Read the passage. If, now we done read, if any man build, if any man's work abide, if any man's work be burned, if any man defile the temple of God, read it. Him shall God destroy. People don't want to deal with it. Well, I'm completing him, preacher. Okay. Spoken like a fool. You ain't going to take a passage like that serious? When Paul warned the Philippian people about a whole group of Christians that walked as enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction. I take it serious. Deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that what might be saved? The spirit may be saved when? They have our Lord Jesus. I mean, I mean, I mean, think about this destruction, guys. And and Bollinger talks about how this means to mar. If any man mar the temple of God, him shall God destroy, or to mar him. And I, I just find that interesting. The King James has got it perfect, defile and destroy. But here's, here's what I think about. If Christ has to burn up all of what you've built upon that foundation to present you to the Father, when he gets done going through your inner man with that fire, what are you going to have left? What are you going to know? If you ain't got that book in there, it ain't going to last. And you'll stand there. There won't even be no denying it, guys. You'll stand in the presence of God and be like, I'm not fit for anything. I don't know nothing. Because Christ ain't going to let that carnal, earthly wisdom enter into his kingdom. And I don't fully comprehend it, but when he destroys that spirit, there ain't going to be no... It's serious, man. Every time you stare at something, every time you listen to something, all the music you're listening to because you like the way it makes you feel and all the television and all this stuff, man, and I've got my issues too. But every bit of that's doing something in your inner man that's going to be revealed by fire one day. 
And it's going to either be burned or abide. But it's not going to be a question of, oh, well, you know, I, I didn't get some rewards. It's going to be a complete spiritual destruction inside of you that's going to leave you unfit and unworthy to do anything in God's house except take orders. Amen. Y'all hear me? Now it just depends on what life you want to live. If you want to give up, if you want to, to, if you want to sacrifice the eternal glory in that world to come for some carnal temporary pleasure, you go right ahead. But we don't look at the things that are seen. We look at the things that are not seen. The things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. 